to the book of Genesis, chapter 26. You know, as you turn there, I'm just very grateful tonight that, you know, it was over 22 years ago that I came into this ministry straight from prison. I know you look at me now and you say, no way, pastor. You were never in prison, but I was. And I was a drug addict, in and out of, incarcerated, full of anger and hatred. But I had a praying mom that she would pray for me and pray and tell me God had a plan for my life. That I didn't have to be a heroin addict. I didn't have to be in and out of jail. I didn't have to be a gang member. And, and then one day I just started to believe her words. And it was in that jail cell where God's words began to just illuminate my mind. And I didn't serve God in jail. I said, God, if I make it out of here alive, amen. Because if, if I tell you where I was from, I'll have to fight my way out, amen. But God was faithful. He seen me out. I went to the men's home. I'm a graduate of the Victory Recovery Homes. And um, that met my wife. I have an awesome wife, man, that she's, she wasn't never a homegirl in the neighborhood, but she's a righteous homegirl, has my back. And I'll tell you what, man, I, there's no other person I'd rather fight the enemy with than my wife, amen. And then, of course, it's good to have our team. There's 12 team members now in Chino. And right, really just, you know, working together, chemistry, and really believing God to really do something tremendous there on the East Coast. A lot of opiate addiction, fentanyl, overdoses. I mean, it's, if you would have seen the video, you would have been able to see. And we are having a crusade in the month of uh, August, well, the end of August and the first two weeks of September. So listen, we want to prepare yourselves, and we're going to really see God do something tremendous. How many can say amen? amen? Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. And I'm just going to read a few scriptures, then we're going to pray. And we stand because it's in reverence to the Lord, not to me. We have reverence for the Lord, and we stand in the, for the reading of his word. So Genesis 26, 17 says, So Isaac moved to the valley, to the Gerar Valley, where he set up their tents and settled down. He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. But then the shepherds from Gerar came and claimed the spring. This is our waters, they said. And they argued over with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac's name, Isaac named the well Essek, which means herdsmen. So Isaac named, Isaac's men dug then another well, but again there was a dispute over it. So Isaac's named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that when Isaac moved on to dig another well, this time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space or to make room for. For he said, at the last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place and dug another well. Father, we ask you just for a mighty move tonight. God, we need you. We can't take cities. We can't take our communities, our families without you, God. You are the living waters that we need to be filled with. And we ask you tonight to move in a powerful way in Jesus' name. And everybody says, before you're seated, look at your neighbor and say, get by the well. And you can go ahead and take your seats tonight. Then look at your other neighbor and say, I'm looking good tonight. <laughs> now, we're in a season in our ministry, and, and even in the world, we know we are living in days, in the, and truly we're living in the last days, as you see, as you see the world, um, the, the landscape of the world is changing, you know, with wars, rumors of wars, with plagues, which is all foretold in the Bible. But in our ministry, we see that our leaders, our founders, our elders, our multi-regionals, our pastors, really feel that God wants to accelerate the growth of our ministry. How many of you can say amen? amen. Because that means that he wants to accelerate the growth of Victor Arch West Covina. Right. Yeah. Victor Outreach Bakersfield East. Victor Outreach Chino. Not just that, now, he doesn't want to just accelerate the growth of our ministry so that we could continue to just plant churches. We're going to plant churches all over the world, different places in our states. But primarily, to, we want to see the acceleration to see God's kingdom grow before his coming back to, to rapture his church. How many of you could say amen? amen? Our primary mandate is seeing the lost saved. And our founder has been leading the direction of our ministry and it is to plant base churches all over the world. And we see it in South Africa, Panama, Guadalajara, um, Third Wave LA. We see uh, different plant based churches that are, that are rising up where the team has a mega mentality. 
Do you have a mega mentality or do you have a minimal mentality? Where they speak one language and where their, where their mindset is they are one team. The name on the front of the jersey is more important than the name on the back of the jersey. How many could say amen? amen. And if we're going to see the vision accelerate through, through you and I, then we must make a decision that will get us individually and as a ministry to where God has called us to be. And that means within every area of your life, it's, if it's in your marriage, in your parenthood, leadership, in your discipleship, in your armor bearing, in every area of your life, there has to be an acceleration of growth. Now, Pastor Sonny just spoke a message in Panama, and he talked about the five decisions that you and I have to make. And the first decision he talked about was to, the decision to pursue my purpose with all my strength. You know, I, I went into the men's home, and I, and I came out of prison, and I had a drug addiction. And I went into that men's home, and when God got a hold, when God delivered me in that men's home from anger, hatred, everything that you could think of, uh, I was addicted from prison, because they have drugs in prison. And God got a hold of my life. That was, it was September 27th, 1999. I came out of prison, went into that man's room because I told my mom, if you don't take me now, I might not make it. And, and she dropped me off. I remember her dropping me off at that men's home, and she didn't even stop the car. I put my foot out of the car, and she took off, threw my bag, uh, threw my bag down the street and took off. And thank God she did that because I probably wouldn't have stayed, amen, because I heard them praying. I'm like, what's going on over there? I, heard, I didn't even know what tongues were. I heard people speaking other languages. like, what's going on? And, and then I looked in there, and there was about 50 men, mustaches and tie. I'm like, man, this is like prison. But there was a man there by the name of Rudy Hernandez that stopped preaching, and, and he says, listen, the, man, the young man in the back, and I was all sweaty, had a hat on. And he says, come up here, and he, he laid his hands on me. And that's the first time I felt the presence of God come upon my life. I started crying. I didn't cry. I tried to hold him back because there was all kinds of guys. I was like, man, you know, trying to hold him back. And I made a decision that I was going to pursue God to, for the purpose that he saved me for. And for the last 22 years, that's what I've been doing. No job has come in the way. No girl has come in the way. No, nothing has to do. No buying a house has not come in the way. We've left houses. We left cars. We packed up our children. We left toys behind. Because I'd made a decision. Because I wasn't going to give the devil my best and give God half. I was hardcore. The neighbor had tattoos on my face. So my spirit, I said, God, I want to be the same for you and even more. So I made a decision to pursue God with all my strength. Then also the decision to always want to grow. Now that's a hard decision because when you've been serving God a long time, you think you've already arrived sometimes. And the decision to say, I got to keep growing. And my pastor's always telling me, Danny, you got to keep growing. <laughs> then I say, yes, pastor. And then he tells me, yeah, you got to keep growing. And do you want to grow? Do you want to be mega? Do you want to do greater things? And yes, I do. Then you have to grow. So that means you got to do things that are going to get you to grow. The decision to always be focused on what God has called you to. Not get distracted when she winks her eyes at you. Or when she Facebook messaged you late at night. Or he, her, or vice versa. Don't get distracted when that job offer comes and they say we're going to pay you $40 an hour, but you got to work on Sundays. And you should tell that guy, listen, that's not worth it because what God has done for me is more valuable than $40 an hour. But if I were you, I would hire me because I'll be your best worker and you need to give me Sundays off and Wednesday nights off and Bible study. See, you guys, that's mega. The decision to stay focused. And then, and then the fourth decision is to not be proud or arrogant. You know, our founder was saying, our, we, it's easy for us to get proud and arrogant in this ministry because people start opening your doors. Oh, brother, you look good now. And the decision to stay humble, to stay humble and clothed in humility. And that sometimes it's hard for some of us, especially the wives. Amen. See, they're not here. I could talk about them tonight. I was like, <laughs> my wife would have been like, brother, you shouldn't have said that. No. And then lastly, he talked about the decision to never be satisfied. I, you know, we, we, could, we could say, listen, we... we you know, pioneered two churches in South Africa. We ran the UTC. We directed the home. We could be satisfied. But I, I came back to, from South Africa, and I said, Pastor, he said, what do you want to do now? I said, Pastor, I want to go out again. I want to take the East Coast because it's always been in my heart, and I was never satisfied. But then I had to get myself in a place to continue to grow so that I, can, I, wouldn't, stay, I wouldn't become stagnant. Now, as we look at our text in, this, in, in the Old Testament, we, we find the importance of rediscovering, discovering, being near and drawing from the wells of our life. 
Now, the Bible speaks of wells in two ways. First, the natural way. In those days, water was very vital. They didn't, you couldn't go to an Arco station in those days and get your, your uh, food, you know, Fiji water. It was vital. It meant if there was no water, your family or your nation could become extinct. It was vital and it was very important. But it also had a spiritual significance in the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their life because it was a place of commitment, inheritance, encounters, and refreshing for the leader himself as well as the leader's family. And as leaders and as disciples, as Christians, we must understand the importance of these wells within our spiritual life. Jesus says, he replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. He's talking about when he met the woman by the well. If you drink this water, this natural water, you will be thirsty again. But if you drink the living waters that flow out of me into your life, and I'm paraphrasing, then you'll never be thirsty again. And that's what happened to many of us. We drank from the living waters. That home became our well. That Bible study became our well. And he began to fill us with living waters that began to bubble over and flow from our lives. In Genesis 26, we see our first, there's four wells of leadership in, Isaac, in Isaac's life. The first well of leadership talks about he began to redig the wells of his father, his father Abraham. This is very interesting, third waiver, new person. Before he dug his own wells, because some of us want to dig our own wells. I want to be the best rapper, but we haven't redug the wells of our pastors or our elders and and. and, and you know, before he did that, he said, I'm going to redig the wells of my father. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to know how my father walked before the Lord. I want to know how my pastor got to where he's at today. Am I in the right place? I want to know where my, how my leaders made it so far. I want to know how they've been married so long serving the Lord. I want to know how this guy's been successful in business, but he hasn't lost a vision. I want to know principles and values that have got us this far. So I got to redig the wells within my life. I gotta read Treasures Out of Darkness again. I gotta read the book of Sunny over and over again. I gotta rephrase and rememorize Isaiah 45, 2 and 3 every few years because I don't wanna lose the wows of my father. And we come from we come from wows that have a rich legacy and inheritance. Before we become the mega leader God or the mega multiplier. You got to remember what our forefathers did to get us where we're at today. There has been a price that has been paid, there has been tears that have been sown. But when he goes to redig the wells of his father, he finds that the enemy has covered them. See, whenever we're trying to put value and principle in our life, the enemy will try to devalue them. You don't got to wear a suit on Sunday. You could be like this other ministry. You could be like this other place where they come in however they wear shorts. You want to be comfortable. No, my friend, I didn't go to parties in shorts. I, I was creasing my stuff for five hours. My socks would walk by themselves. I didn't go, you know, we, we, we didn't give the world half, so we, we, now we have dignity, and I love to wear a suit on Sunday morning. I love to put on my tie, walking in the church. Listen, I used to be this, but Jesus changed my life. I, I, but the value, until they say we don't have to wear ties no more, and I probably still will wear a tie. We value those things. We value our leadership. You know, nowadays you tell, well, pastor wants to meet at his house, and now, you know, some of, some of us, we don't even value that no more. Well, you know. I got to go to a picnic in my community. In our days when the pastor summoned us, we're like, oh, my God, what did I do? Oh, Lord, I might not be here tomorrow. He might send me out right now. We were, like, nervous. We were honored. We were privileged. We show up all quiet. And I don't know what to say. Do you guys feel like that when your pastor's around you? Like the honor when Pastor Sonny Jr. advice, I'm like, man, I'm just honored. I don't, I'm not going to speak because I'm going to say something I shouldn't be saying. Amen. But there was an honor and a value and, and taking care. Pastor, let me take care of you. Let me take care of the leadership. Let me serve the new believer. Let me serve. There's values that we have. We cannot lose. Showing up to church early. It didn't matter what everybody else said. I needed to be at the altars. And I don't leave until my pastor leaves. I don't, I, I'm there before my pastor gets. See, those are the principles and values that we were taught. And we, got, and we got to make sure that this third wave is drinking from the same wilds. And they are from the same wilds that we drank from. That old school water. Mm. Sometimes it's rough. But man, does it go a long way. So he began to redig, but he finds that the enemy was trying to, he was trying to devalue. And he'll try to devalue things in your life like faithfulness, loyalty. You know? Nowadays, you don't have to be loyal because you, you could be past, you could have your pastor here, but then you could have a pastor on YouTube. And you'll listen more to the pastor on YouTube than you will your own pastor. Loyalty and, 
faithfulness and commitment and sacrifice. My friend, it will take sacrifice. If you want to get closer to God, it does take sacrifice. We have to understand that these walls have refreshed us. They watered us. They help us to grow into the men and women that God has called us to be. Isaac renamed these wells the same as his father Abraham. And this was a sign of honor. We have to honor our legacy that our founders and our leaders have laid before us. We have to honor the things that our pastors have taught us. It, it, it was a sign of honor that he renamed them. A lot of us want to take over. I heard a pastor say, you know, some of you are waiting for your pastor to die so you could inherit his ministry. But that's not how you inherit ministry. You get busy for God, and God gives you the ministry. I say that you want your pastor to die, but it was a mindset he was speaking to. So we have to understand that when we redid, you know, us as the Joshua generation, we have the responsibility to make sure that you, that you new person, that you that are just coming that don't even know the Lord when you get saved, we got to give you the same water from the wells we drank from. Now, you might do it in your own way. Like, our, the, you know, the water we drank from, sometimes it was rough. Our leaders, you know, maybe we needed it. Maybe we needed to be, you know, um, challenged the way. And maybe this generation does it. But we're going to make sure you get the same waters. And you communicate it the way you need to. You might not do it the same. You might do it in your own style. But you're still giving the pure water that we got. Sometimes our leaders would make us drink that water. Open your mouth. Not our pastors, but the leaders of sometimes around them. And they, but they wanted to make sure we, had, we got it in us. And we have to value that. Not only does the enemy try to cover up wells within your life, but then secondly, wells are not only covered, but they also dry up. Now, Jeremiah 17, 13 says, they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. And sometimes when we get so involved, because we're, we're, we know we're people that we, when we get in, when God gets a hold of us, we get involved in everything we have. But then it could become routine. It could become something normal. We could walk into God's presence and not feel the presence of God. We could be here on a Sunday but not really be here. Am I talking to anybody? Am I talking to some leaders? You could be in leadership, but your heart's far from God. And there's times where you got to get back to make sure that well doesn't dry up. You got to get back by the well. You got to get back in God's presence. You got to get deeper in prayer. Am I talking to anybody? Am I the only one that's been like that? You know, I felt like that for a little while. I felt like that for a little while. Like, I would come in, okay, who am I going to, and during service, like, who am I going to meet for lunch after? Who am I going to talk to? And then really miss out on what God was trying to do. Even in worship, I'd be like, okay, you know, that's a long worship song. They did three already. And all of a sudden, but then, and then all of a sudden I had to say, listen, my walls are being dried up. I got to get back to just, I, I'm grateful just to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. I'm grateful if my pastor tells me to clean the bathroom. And he and did, uh, while, uh, during this time, pastor would say, I need, I need you. For, I think it was like a third-way conference or, or the rehab, the victory thing they just did uh, not that long ago in Chino. And he goes, I need you to check in with this pastor. Whatever he needs, serve him. So I'm like, all right. I said, so pastor, what do you need? It's another pastor. And he goes, I need you. See those 500 chairs right there? He's like, we need to break those down. I'm like, all right, cool. Where's the home? Well, the home left. I'm like, well, who's going to do it? He's like, you're going to do it. So me and him got together, and we broke down 500 chairs. And I was right there in the middle of the night, and he's saying, oh, man, I'm so glad Jesus set me free. And all of a sudden, I, the joy and the delight and, 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 and saying, man, I'm just thankful that I'm not, I'm not in this place anymore. I'm, not, I'm just thankful I'm not in that darkness anymore, that my children don't have to see that. But God, I'm thankful. If I had to set up 500 more, and all of a sudden... Man, the rivers of living water began to be fresh again, began to be stirred. And, and, and all of it, you know, we understand that there's moments where you get dried up. But what do you do? You go a little deeper. You go a little deeper. The second well, see, the first well of leadership was honoring the legacy. The second well is the well of hostility. Learning how to dig your well when times are hard. People always tell me, has it been easy to serve the Lord? No, it hasn't been easy, but it's been worth it. It's been worth it. I, my backyard is Chino Prison. Literally. I used to be in Chino Prison. So when I wake up every morning, I say, oh, thank God I'm not there no more. Thank God that I get to look in and not, not from the inside. I'm looking from the outside. You know, not on the outside looking in. No, I can't sing, but you know what I mean. But learning how to build when things, see, he... After he honors his father's wells, he goes and digs two more wells, and each well he faces hostility. 
And that's what happens sometimes when you get saved and your marriage isn't perfect. But you got to keep digging. You got to get by the well and continue to dig and say, God, I need the rivers, the living water. I keep, you know, when you're discipling and the disciple doesn't always listen to you or they don't make it, but you just keep on digging. See, we need leaders that know how to work hard. We need leaders that know how to keep digging. And we need people, individuals that know how to dig deeper. I was in Chicago last week and we we went to the sky deck. I don't know if you've ever seen it where there's no, there, there's, it's like glass. You're standing on glass. That's freaky. I was like, I was like, whoa. So I finally did it. And my son did it. I finally did it. And then, and then, but to get to that part of the building, to get to the highest part of the building, when you go on ground level, you don't get in the elevator and go to the highest part. You know what you have to do? You have, to go, you have to go down, all the way down to the bottom of that building that's below ground, to the bottom floor. Don't ask me why, but to go higher, sometimes you got to just go deeper. Sometimes you want to be a big leader, a mega leader, then you got to dig deeper. You got to learn how to keep digging when nobody listens to you. You got to learn how to keep digging when that life group's not growing or that V group's not growing. You got to learn how to keep digging when that ministry isn't going the way you want. Because if you get by the well, then all of a sudden you're going to hit that water you've been looking for, the water of the Holy Spirit, my friend, and then you're going to see your ministry explode. You're going to see your marriage blessed but you gotta stay by the well see sometimes when those things happen we look to other things we start looking you know for marriage with people that have been divorced five times and getting advice from them we don't even read the bible no more the only book we read is facebook when adversity comes i always tell people this they say dirty bibles uh, dusty bibles lead to dirty lives we got to keep digging when times get hard, when, when we don't see the future, we got to keep digging. and We got to keep digging that well and say, God, I, I need to get a hold of you. I need to be addicted to you. I need to stay close by the well because I can't do this without you. And in this season, we've been preparing. I've been having to get close by the well, deeper times of prayer, then to more intimate with God, waking up every morning saying, God, I need you and I can't start my day without you. See, for some of us, we just need to understand that. There's going to be adversity and there's going to be hostility, sometimes with our family, sometimes with our, our boss. Um, Joe, yeah, he's excited to get lunch up, but in the process, he lost his job. But they try to bribe him. If you don't go, I'm going to give you a truck and a $5 raise. And he thought about it. He's like, hmm. But he says, no, I'm not going to be bought off. I, I was an alcoholic and Jesus set me free. And I, I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And, and, and Right? But, but he stayed by the well, and he kept digging. See, sometimes when we get hit a little bit, we, we throw down the shovel, and we want to quit. But we've got to learn how to, di- we gotta learn how to keep digging, to dig deeper, to be hard hardworking. And those are the individuals we really need to, to become. The third well of leadership is the well of increased capacity. He then moves on to another well where the Bible says he begins to dig, his servants begin to dig. And this time he found water. And there was no dispute. There was no hostility. He wasn't redigging wells. And the Bible says that he named that well open space or to make room for. This speaks of co- increase of capacity and expansion. See, when you stay by the well, God begins to, everybody wants to be a mega leader and they read books. But you know how you become a mega leader? You get close to other mega leaders. You get close to our founder, our pastors. And then you get close to the well where you encounter Jesus. And he begins to increase you. And he begins to change the mentality. See, I could have stood a cholo. But God said, no, you're going to reach nations. And you can't reach a nation like a vato loco. You got to change. You know, I used to live with Pastor Phil. And I used to crease my pants. In fact, I met Pastor Reza one time, I don't know if he remembers, at a gang meeting. And it was me and my homeboy. My homeboy got saved, so we were like tights, you know. And he came up and goes, hey, you guys, you guys, you know, he started talking. Oh, it's good to see the homeboys coming in. And I, and I never forgot that, but I used to crease my pants. And one time Pastor Phil goes, I thought you wanted to change. And I'm like, well, I do want to change. That's why I'm here. And he goes, he's like, but that represents something. That represents your old lifestyle. And I said, no, it doesn't. But It did. And I said, from that day on, because I felt so convicted, I stopped creasing. I don't even crease my pants anymore. <laughs> See, something so little and something, but he was increasing my capacity. He was expand, bringing expansion to my mindset because years later, I pastored a South African church, a, a diverse church. And, and now we're going to do it on the East Coast where you can't go in a Californian. You got to go in with love and with... I could have stood a homeboy. 
I'll never forget where I came from. I still love the homeboys from all walks of life, from all neighborhoods, from all races. Even the guys there in Boston, we, they're not like us, but, man, we got, a, we got a heartbeat. But I'm called to reach people. But that happened because I got by the wow, and I started to expand my mentality. I got around my pastor, and he began to take me to higher levels, and he began to challenge my mentality and say, listen, you're going to reach pe- more people than you could have ever imagined. And because I got by the wow. See, you want to grow big, then you got to get by the well. Well. Not by, not by um, Boca de Rio. <laughs> Although it's good. Huh? Not by binging on Netflix. Sometimes you're going to have to turn those things off and begin to just get by the well and saying, God, I, I'm desperate for you and I'm thirsting for you once again. God, fill me up. And God, I, there's an assignment that I have and I want to I want to be everything you call me to be. And I want to be more than I could have ever, because, not for me, God, but for your glory so that you could get the glory. So that when my friends see me, I'm not the same. When my family sees me, I'm not the same. When my wife sees me, I'm not the same. You know, I even, even in that aspect, I remember my mom telling my wife, you don't want to know him unsaved. And I thank God for that because I got by the wow. God even helped me to be a better husband. How to take care of my wife. How to nurture her. How to care for her. How to serve my wife. And then the same for her. I, I just had surgery. My wife was like, man, she was so awesome. And then I could like fake it. Like, oh, make me dinner. Oh, help me get the remote. It was right there. He's <laughs> like, get the remote, baby. <laughs> you know? But, man, it, it really grew us. Because it's not just for leadership. You want to you be mega? You could be a mega husband, a mega wife, a mega V group leader, a mega men's home leader, a mega son, a mega daughter. A, am I in the right place? A mega millionaire. See, God doesn't only want to raise a million. Some of you are going to be millionaires. You're going to start businesses. But you got to grow your capacity. You're not called to be an employee. You're called to be an employer. But you got to get by the well. You got to stay by the well. And say, God, there's been many times where I felt so inadequate, but I had to get by the well. Every time I come from, back from Boston, we get hit. But I got to get by the well. And then the fourth well and the last well is the well of acceleration. Deuteronomy says, and I'm paraphrasing this. It says that you're going to inherit cisterns or wells that you did not dig. See, for some of us, God's going to start. This is going to be the, the year that God is going to give us wells that we did not dig. He's going to give us cities that we didn't plant or harvest. He's going to open doors for some of you that you didn't knock on. He's going to give you favor you weren't expecting. You're going to get promotions you didn't apply for. God's going to open doors for you that you have never seen before. But listen, if you want to experience those things, then you got to get by the well. Listen, how many of you want to get married? Then you need to get by the well. Isaac, you know how he found his wife? He sent his servant and his wife was by the well. That's the one. That's the one that I'm going to marry. The one by the well. Not the one that's looking at me all service. Not the one that's messaging me. I'm going to pick the one that is on her knees at the altar. Some of you need direction. Hagar, Bible says that she was being dealt wrongly by by Sarah. And she takes off into the desert, and she was about to die. She needed direction. And the Bible says that she's seen a well that God showed her. Go drink from that well. She, she got by the well, and he says, listen, now this is what you need. You need to go back there and serve her until the time comes because I'm going to bless your son. See, if you need direction, get by the well. If you're here and you don't know Jesus, guess what? West Covina is a well for you. And tonight, Jesus could change your life just like he did the Samaritan woman. You want to be a soul winner? Get by the well. That lady got so touched by God, she went back to her city, and she became the pastor, the leader of, am I in the right place? But she was by the well. See, we got to get by the well. We got, that's what I've been doing in this season, man, more prayer, more intimacy with God, and saying, God, I'm inadequate. I'm nothing without you. I need you, God, because the devil's saying we can't do it, and the devil's saying this. My family's never going to get it. He's saying all these lies, but I believe in your report, God. The more I'm by the well, the more peace I have. The mo- Am I in the right place? I wish I could get 10 people that could help me preach tonight. You need to get by the well, and by the well, you need to start to dig a little bit deeper. You just need to go a little bit deeper. See, those that reap the rewards of the well, they're faithful in the little. 
Sometimes we want to do great things, but we can't be faithful with the little things. For those of us that are going to experience everything God wants us to, it's going to be because we're by the well. There's a saying with the first generation, the first generation built altars. That means that they prayed for everything. We heard in our ministry, our pioneer generation, they didn't know a lot, but they had a passion to see God's kingdom expand. Right? Our generation, we've inherited wells. We've inherited wells, but also we're going to encounter the Lord at those wells. You know what keeps us 20 years, 10 years, 15 years on fire for God? I feel like I just got saved. I don't know how you feel. I feel like God just rescued me. 20 years later, I'm still as excited, but it's been because we stayed by the well. As they come tonight, I want to pray for those of you that say, you know what, I need to get back by the well. I need to get by the well, and I just need to have an encounter with Jesus. That same, you know, when I look at, when I look at, when I went to the men's home, you know what happened? That men's home was a well of living waters for me. I was in the men's home for one year. For one year. Man, but in that year, I learned how to get a hold of God. I learned how to hear his voice. Yeah, people thought I was crazy. My family thought I was crazy. They said, you're brainwashed. I said, yeah, but my brain was filthy. You didn't even let me in your house. You didn't trust me. You locked the doors, and I'll be inside your house. But because I got by the well, all my family has heard about the Lord. Because I got by the well, all my crime partners and homeboys have heard about the Lord and what he's done in my life. Because I got by the well. Boston's on the map because we got by the well and say, God, what do you want to do next? What do you want to do in our lives? I got to go deeper in you, but you got to get by the well. You want a better marriage? Get by the well. You want to encounter the Lord? Get by the well. The Bible says rivers of living water. The, the, the water God wants to give you, it, it says it bubbles up springs up from within you. And that's the kind of Christianity this world needs to see. You think we're going to go into Boston and be all, oh, you know, it's hard. Oh, it's a big city. No, we might think it sometimes. We're going to go in there like, you know what? We're going to slay this giant. Not in our own. He said it. Not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit, oh God. We're going to see drug addicts get saved, God. We're going to see marriages restored. We're going to see uh, families put back together. We're going to see the intellectual atheists give their hearts to Jesus. Why? Because we've been by the well. And tonight, you know, we're just talking to Pastor Ezra. And, and like this area, we need to get by the well. Broken families, gang activity. I didn't even think there was any more gangs. But he was telling me, man, it's active out here. How are we going to reach those individuals? We need to get by the well. How many of you are ready to get by the well tonight? And you could tell when somebody's been by the well because they just, man, I'm going through it, Pastor, but I'm here, man. And we're going to, we're going to get, we're going to, you know, we got your back. And we're going to fight the devil together. And, huh? And I thank God for our team. We had prayer last night. And I've been battling some things. And after that prayer, they prayed for me. We were, you know, we're just in prayer. That night, man, I felt the peace of God. Because the enemy, like, he's been crazy. Not, not you know, because he tried to put fear. He's going to try to put fear in you. And I had to get in that. I had to get by the well. And then all of a sudden, the peace of God. I woke up and I was like, man. Woo. Huh? Then I went to the office today and we met. I was like, come on, we're going to do this, man. Huh? We're going to slay that giant. We're going to see God do great things. And pastor, whatever you need us to do. And, man, we're ready, pastor. He's like, okay, I want you guys to start a V group. Oh, what? I get by the well again. Okay, if that's our assignment, we're going to do, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to have the best V group. Of course, we have 12 team members. We should have the best V group. Huh? Well, you know, you know what's going to be by? How we're going to do all those things is getting by the well. And for some of us, we just need to get by the well again. God's not done with some of you, but you've been away from the well. You've been dried up a little bit. And we've all been there, ministers, pastors. We've been there. But when you get by the well and you encounter the Lord, 
20 years, man, I've been meeting the Lord by that well. That's why I never went back to drugs. That's why I went through the home one time. Right? right? That's why you're not a gang member no more, Pastor Julio from 29th Street. Don't shoot me if you're the enemy of 29th Street. I'm just saying he was from. Look at him now. I can't even tell. He's like a distinguished. A beautiful house and family. And I'm like, man, you know why? Because he's been by the well. Your home director's been by the well. I could tell because he was throwing gang signs during worship service. I don't know what you're <laughs> But you know, that, you know what that joy comes from? It comes from being by the well. By the wow, you can't stop that. Like, come on, brother, just don't be throwing real gang. It was like West Coast, I don't know what it's good, West Covina or something, right? B.O., I don't know what it's good, but that's what we need. That's what's gonna set people free. That kind of joy, but it doesn't come if we're not by the well. Tonight, I want you to stand. Come on, the goodness of God. You know? Listen, tonight. For some of us, we, when we get by the wow, I was listening to a message, I'm always, this is not my words, and he talked about the overflowing cup, that Jesus is the cup, and he wants to overflow your life, and he's going to make you walk, you know, because it co correlates with Psalms 23, and it talks about the overflowing cup, how he anoints your head with oil, and then when he anoints your head with oil, then the overflow comes, and that's what God wants to do with some of you here tonight. West Covina is going to be a mega church. It's going to be a base church. But if it's going to be a base church, that means we need mega leaders. We need mega marriages. We need mega parents. We need mega disciplers. But it's only going to happen if we get by the well. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope this message blessed you and ministered into your heart. Also want to let you know that it's never too late for you to give. If you look at the links below, there you can see different ways for you to give unto the Lord. Also, if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so right now, where there you can see previous messages and future services. Other than that, get connected and stay connected. We'll see you real soon. God bless.